when it comes to nursing, you can open the book, you can read the instructions, and basically do what it says to do step by step, and it would help someone live. I think it takes a special person to help someone die. You have to have that holistic approach. You have to be there mentally. You have to be there emotionally. You have to be there psychologically. So it takes a whole person, as well as a whole team, to help someone transition to the end of life. My name is Claudine Jones. I am a registered nurse and case manager for hospice and community care in Rock Hill, South Carolina. I'm Sharon Shepard, RN case manager with hospice and community care in Rock Hill, South Carolina. My name is Frank Grabuski and I work as a bereavement counselor with hospice and community care. A typical day for me, once I get up in the morning, I get the kids up, get them ready for school, get myself focused, focus on my patients, what I need to do for the day, um, kind of reflect back on the patients from yesterday to see if there's anything that needs to be caught up. Then I kind of prepare myself mentally for my patients because I have to be mentally prepared so I can, you know, help them with whatever challenges they may have that day. When I first meet a family, I'm meeting them under very emotional, distressed circumstances. A lot of mixed emotions, a lot of mixed feelings. We are about to go see Ms. Marjorie Pretty. Um, she's an elderly lady that has been diagnosed with bladder cancer. Now this picture, I just had it taken when I got my cap. She received her diagnosis at the beginning of January, so everything is still new with her. I think it was 22. 22. She is accepting it as much as to be expected. Oh, it's comfortable to know that somebody's here, but it's, it's hard to know that you can't do what you used to do. How would you rate that neck pain? I would say about seven. About a seven, and it's usually right here at the base of your neck. Right across there. Uh -huh. Miss Pretty talked about being stressed just a bit, so I was going to go ahead and talk with the social worker Nicole and maybe speak with Pastor Lake and see if there's any literature they can bring out to her just to give her any kind of feedback on how she can reduce her stress. I'll try to call her again this week. That's probably going to be the best option for her anyway. The team concept is essential for us. I think that each staff person plays uh, a crucial role. They bring a unique strength or a unique gift. Uh, but all of us share that same common responsibility and uh, privilege of being a friend to our families and being companions with them. How did the meeting go with Pastor Lake last week? Real good. Real yeah. good. Yeah. He even played the piano for me. When you're able to show and give compassion to your patients and their family members, you alleviate their fear. You bring a sense of calmness into the home. You alleviate their anxiety. Good. Just being there sometimes, just your presence, means a lot to the patients and the families. Some families have a lot of family support and there's, you know, five people next to them when the patient passes away and some people are really on their own. And the support that hospice brings with the nurse and the social workers and the chaplains and the volunteers and the home health aides provides that family for them. We become their family during this time. You won't be here tomorrow. Only if you want me to come. You want me to come by just to check on you? Well, you can just call and make sure I'm okay. Absolutely. That's what I'll do. Yeah. Once they become comfortable with me, it's more like I'm, I'm their friend or their confidant rather than their nurse. Okay, come on girls, let's go back in the house. Come on. I got interested in hospice care when I did a clinical rotation during my uh, two-year RN degree. Good girls. There you are. And the nurse that I rode with was just so compassionate and so caring that I was just very, very impressed. And I thought, well, let, let me see if I can try that, too. I, I, I think I can do that. What I'm doing today is I'm going to one of the nursing facilities in Rock Hill and I'm going to see a couple of patients while I'm there. Uh, nothing acutely going on with, with any of them. I'm going in to see Zula McCarter today. She's a hospice patient for about the past six months or so. 
She is somebody who has lost the ability to respond to you. You know what? Today is February 6th. It's really warm out for February too. The ones that aren't able to really acknowledge my presence, I feel that when I come in and talk to them that um, they, they feel me. They, they know that I'm there. Sometimes it's just a very subtle change in body movement or maybe some um, movement of the eyes or something like that. But I, I feel that they know that I'm there. Paul? Oh, hey. someone's calling. It's Sharon. How you doing? Hi, Hi Sharon. Hi, Ann. How, How are, are you? you? I'm, I'm good. Fine. We're nice just to see you. Having How a you little doing talk. Today? Good, thank you. <laughs> Feeling all right? I'm doing all right. You doing fine? From day to day, I go into primarily nursing homes and I take care of the patient's needs, uh, pain management, symptom management, um, provide one-on-one -on -one visits and uh, help them with any coping. Anything you want to talk about? Anything bothering you? No, nothing bothering me. I think compassion is a very key element in what I do because if you didn't have the compassion, I think you would just go in and it would be much more mechanical and you wouldn't have that um, really good connection with, with your patient. Well, you're looking yeah. mighty spiffy today. Yeah, he is. I think what's so valuable about our services after a patient dies is that our services don't end. We don't abandon that family. Their journey continues on. I'm going to visit Ms. Killian, who lost her 57-year-old son recently from cancer. He lived here with me, took help take care of me after his uh, father died. We'll probably continue doing an assessment this morning to kind of evaluate where she is in regard to her mourning. Nobody hadn't had uh, courage to come in here and try to get it together. Before he died, they took his king's out of here and put a hospital bed in it, and uh, that's what he had when he died. What we believe is that uh, the grief process uh, is not just something that one is over with uh, shortly after the death. Uh, there is a process to, to grieving, and if properly mourned, you can move through uh, the, the sticking points, the areas such as accepting the death and working through the pain. Losing Major uh, had to be such a tremendous setback for you. It has been. Um, how are you dealing with that these days? Well, sometimes I get kind of sad. I know he wouldn't want me to do that, and uh, I wouldn't want him to be in misery either. Mm -hmm. <laughs> we got along so good in the company for each other. When people ask me what I do for a living and I tell them I work as a bereavement counselor, they are a little bit taken aback. Uh, it's not the most common uh, uh, type of work one would, would hear someone say. I guess there's a lot of questions because society tends to, in a subtle way, uh, prefer not to get into the area of death. You haven't stopped hurting, have you? No, not yet, no. I don't know how long it'll take, but you know, it take a little while. It'll you know. take however long it takes. I think if people understood more what hospice actually is and what it's about and what it can do for the patient and the family, I think more people would be willing to let hospice come into their families and in, into their lives at that, at that point in time. Hey, Maurice. Hey, am I coming in the right door? <laughs> you know, you, you've been so good about participating in, in the men's group, and, and how are you finding that as, as being helpful and supportive for you? I don't know where I would have been if it had not been for the group. Within the past couple months, we've gotten a couple of new guys, so we get to share again what happened to us in, e in our lives, and each time it gets a little bit easier and a little bit easier. I met her when she and I were in the fifth grade elementary school. And we were sort of sweethearts, you know. 
Six months ago or, or eight months ago now, I couldn't have talked about it without crying. When I'm visiting a gentleman who, uh, who I, I perceive as have ha having been a strong, competent man, and he just lost his wife of 50 years, and crying is not a behavior that's familiar to him, or a lady of similar qualities who's just lost her best friend. I really feel compelled to take some action that's going to help them get through what would make it easier for them. I think this is one of the prettiest walls that we got in the house. Now I can talk about days like this with pride and humility as well as uh, gratitude that I can do it. When I tell people what I do for a living, that I'm a hospice nurse, a lot of times I get the reaction of, oh my goodness, how could you do that every single day? How can you deal with people that are dying all the time? And my response is usually something along the lines of, but everybody dies. And if I can make a difference, um, even to just one small little bit in somebody's life, then I feel like I've done my job. For everything we see that might be a little bit sad, there's 10 wonderful things that come from it. Compassion to me is being able to relate to someone's fears, being able to relate to someone's anxiety, being able to relate to their emotions, meeting them where they are. It's much more than just understanding or sympathizing with somebody, it's actually being uh, with them, being a partner with them on their journey and helping them to find the resources that they need. They helped us overcome the instant hurdle when we received the news that definitely the cancer had become terminal. The nurse has fielded my crazy phone calls and worries at all hours of the day, and they're just there. They don't seem to have any hours. I consider it one of those, those higher callings. You get so much self-realization, you get so much self-pride. When I come home in the afternoon, just to know that I've helped some family members, just to know that I've helped ease this process and smooth it out for them, that gives me such a great sense of pride. I don't know what we would have done without hospice. There's no way in the world I could have been prepared for that myself. Because when it came, it was, it was a, sh a real shocker. Being a counselor is sort of a way of life. When I can see somebody recapture their life or get through a particular sticking point, relocating this intense love they had and putting it in its proper place so that they can move on. Things like that are uh, extremely rewarding. I find that very satisfying to see somebody moving forward.